<laughs> okay, so I've been talking to parents and some of my clients, and they have been telling me that their kids are picky eating and the frustrations that come around their health when they feel stuck with their kids who are picky eating. So I was like, well, let's let's navigate around this. Let's figure out what we can do to have a conversation about how we can address and even talk to our kids about food. So the first um, guest I have to help me kind of learn how to talk about that is Geraldine. She is a, uh, I like to call her a communication enthusiast. <laughs> she has created her own language arts curriculum uh, for gifted kids, which is just amazing. And she's got a 10 year, 11 year old, right? Yeah. Ten yeah, turning and, eleven. Ten turning eleven. Yeah. <laughs> so, and who you've been creative with, and and the, she actually loves to eat salads. Like, she, and I would love to hear like what strategies that got you guys to do that. Yeah. So, I can relate to that very much because in when she was five, six years old, she was a very picky eater to the point where I always thought oh no, she's going to be the unhealthiest child on the earth when she's going to grow up. And, and I never, you know, like to put a lot of effort into the kitchen, like spend a lot of time. So I'm not going to cook three meals just because I don't have the time for it because I'm running a company and homeschooling and everything else. So what I did is use a couple of strategies. Uh, one, for example, is... Children role model very heavily what we do, especially when they're under 10 years old. And one way to do this is when you verbalize your values and put them into characters that the children love and address. So they're heroes, for example. If they love Disney movies, then I would be like, wow, look, she really loves to eat salad. <laughs> um, or like I would kind of plan, but not like, reinforcing it like hey look by the way do you see it like that you know it's more kind of on the side just a side remark because it's one of those moments I don't know if you've ever experienced it when you know you say something and two weeks later all of a sudden the child your child says the same exact thing back to you and you're like where did that come from <laughs> okay. and that happens continuously so just pointing out your values across their heroes it start you know on the side that starts the process yeah yeah and just one way to kind of bring that conversation in about it and, and then engage them oh, one thing I like to do is um, I'll ask my kids or or kids I'm talking to like what do you love to do and sometimes um, you know the answer is soccer I'm like oh well like you need lots of protein and some good carbs to, to run fast in soccer or if it's video games, because <laughs> we all know that's the reality. Like, oh man, carrots, I hope you're really good with your hand-eye coordination because your eyes are, you know, responding well to carrots, yeah. <laughs> so like just like learning what they love to do and having that conversation, oh man, like that'll really help you do what you love to do. And that works for adults too, but. <laughs> yeah, because it makes sense, right? Just the pattern of combined that what, you want to either your goal or your desire and you t attach that together that one just doesn't go with the other then it makes sense that you address it like, yeah yeah so like finding out what they love and just using that to have a conversation about it Ever, like a low-key like no high stress like <laughs> want to eat your steamed buns so you have to eat your steamed buns you know nothing like stressful like that like oh look mm. at all the different foods that they're eating you know just yeah, mm, that. that's interesting you yeah. know it's it's yeah, yeah it's, it's more of like oh wow that's interesting i noticed that versus you telling a command because i mean it's Especially working with like 2E individuals and myself and kids with ADHD, we tend to not accept authority. So if anybody, like just not, if anyone tells us do not do this or do this, we would directly do the opposite just because you said so. Yeah. Yes. I have one so, in my house. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> 
you could play with. Uh, I like I like to play with that um, being being, for example, that it's like no, no, this is this is not for you. Like this is if it's a language art skill, I would say well, this is way too powerful. If you knew this, then who I would like, th and then you would be like, nope. I want it right now. And the same is with food, right? It's just playful. Again, this is playful. Yeah. It's like not me like literally blocking them off, but just like playfully say like, oh, this is this. You want no. Oh, I'm so happy you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then like, they cool. yeah, yeah. Creating that like, oh, this is special. Like you have to be really interested in eating this because this is like powerful responsible yeah i love that and and did you you use that with your daughter how did that go oh she reacts to that very well like yeah. even because you know i talk about it like i do now and she she listens to it and hears it and even then it's like i i can challenge her we challenge each other um in that form so whenever like i still do that to this day when there's something that she kind of starts to like move back, like move away. And like, I notice because it's always, I never want to get this feeling that I'm pushing her towards things like eat this, right. Yeah. Or do this because then she blocks off, which is quite natural. I do it too. Like if you, you know, if, if, you, if I get the feeling of like, I have to, then I'm kind of start to shut off. And so, but humans, if you, then give the pressure of I'm going to take it away from you more of kind of this feeling, even if it's playful, then it becomes interesting again. So I, yes, I still do it to this day, which, which is really fun. Like we're doing it in a really fun and playful way because it's just like a tool of, of who, no, never mind. Versus like, it has to be a certain way. And if it's not, then mm. you become frustrated, you know? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Like, that's pretty, um, it's creative. It's a really creative way to do it. My in-laws do that with when the kids were really young, like toddler age, where they would pretend, it used to drive me nuts, but it works. They would pretend to fall asleep and say, okay, don't, you know, don't eat my bite of food. And then the kids would eat it. And it was really, it, it would drive me nuts because it's playing games at the table. And I'm like, no, we just need to finish. <laughs> but like, it really did work. I, I just, it just, it still works to this day. Like if we just do that, even with our five-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It's like in between just like, and, and another like story, I guess, when I'm going running with her, um, was in between, or if I'm wanting to giving a life lesson that something that I always did, and then, then I saw her doing it, and I don't want to really to repeat the same mistake like I did, but she role modeled it off of me because I used to do it. Yeah. Then I would say, gosh, you know, I had, you know, I don't know how old I am, 30, 30, 32, 30, eh, I stopped counting. Anyway, I would say like, oh my God, it's like I had decades, like until 25 years I had until I learned this one thing. And she would be like, you know what? And and, and she would be like, nope, gonna learn it in the next five minutes. I'm faster than you, mom. <laughs> so, just like this, but I'm like, oh, yeah. you're the, you know. And I, I, I praise her then for that because of course I'm like, go girl is like that's awesome that's exactly what i want and she's like super proud of it because she learns yeah. stuff so much faster than i do which i find really really cool yeah i love how you frame that that's really creative <laughs> i think it's so hard sometimes as a mom to like step out of the okay we just got to get this done into that creative approach narrative it's it's, it's a challenge to move from one to the other well i think it's a habit it's a mm -hmm. habit and maybe you think about it or you've heard about it like in those moments that's where stories really come in handy when all of, all of a sudden your brain goes oh wait I could maybe I could try this or I've heard this little thing you know that I could say this or approach it from this angle and then you just test it out like if one thing doesn't work then you simply approach it from a different reaction right yeah yeah I, I love that it's so hard to it's so it's hard. It's been hard for me to think like that too. So, like I'm looking for ways where we can just naturally engage and do that. Um, okay. And so you homeschool your kids. I know a lot of my friends and families I talk to also homeschool. How do you incorporate that 
piece and that creativity into your homeschool life and your curriculum that you've made? Like, what, what are some ways that you add that in there? Do you mean now specifically for the cooking or the communication piece? Well, you mentioned that you, ha you had done um, so a project with your kids or students where you created their own cookbook. Yes. So for, for cooking specifically, um, one thing, well, before we come to the project, one thing she does, for example, is she got uh, from my sister, she got the present of um, HelloFresh, which is a recurring box that she comes to. So she continuously cooks for herself and chooses the menus. And that's a different way for her right now, just to really, you know, experiment either by herself or we cook together, um, which builds relationship and her cooking skills. And I find it awesome because on some days where I don't have time to cook, I'm like, go girl. Yeah. <laughs> and then she loves to cook. And I'm like, mm -hmm. done. That's that's one perfect time management um, thing on my side. And she's learning and testing new things. Um, another thing is, yes, we incorporate, try to, for example, language arts into cooking. So in December, they created a cookbook, um, mine about dogs, because in our house, a lot of things around dogs. Um, and a fun way to that we translated that out was a tool that we used uh, inside the Story Weavers was is descriptive language. And that you can use as well. So it, it the gist of it is that you, it, the child wants to persuade you to get a salad, get a pizza, whatever, like whatever they want for lunch, for dinner. And then they try to, you know, use the five senses. So you, the child would be saying, you know, just mom, imagine if we would, you know, walk into your favorite restaurant, which you always, you know, your face always lightens up if you, if you go inside because we smell the fresh smell of that freshly baked pizza coming out of the oven with the mozzarella like perfectly brown where you lift up the piece and you see the mozzarella stretch and mm. you know so you continue like that when you're like oh my god I want pizza <laughs> <laughs> yeah which our brain does right I mean to ourselves if we yeah. imagine like pizza like that just looks so awesome in our minds right and the parents just as a defense mechanism by the way this is for the parents um, if you don't want pizza, you just use descriptive language to turn it around. So you could be like, yeah, you know, or we could order pizza, which would mean that the driver would probably sit and fart on your pizza. And then it would come cold, you know, when it's cold and the mozzarella is already like stale and clunky, you know, and it's like, ugh. and then yeah. it would come and we would bite in it. It would be half cold. And <laughs> You know, when it goes down and she's like this clump in your stomach and it's like, no, never mind. I don't want pizza. So <laughs> you use that throughout the month to actually make fun of food um, mm -hmm. or, of course, in other things. Like, of course, she started using it, of course, to go outside or, you know, she would say, mom, just imagine the laughter. We would have so much fun telling stories and breathing the fresh air. So it was really fun way of like using descriptive language in food but as well in other areas of life yeah I love that tug and pull of both perspectives with that like creative story writing that could be a fun um fun project yeah and and many kids by the way we, we had one specific girl who never really cooked but because the aim was a cookbook which you could make anything right you could make it around science around uh minecraft around like <laughs> let the kids choose as crazy topic as it gets um and then or a christmas cookbook simply um or a cookbook for you know your dog or your like there's millions of ideas about how to create and then they experiment and <laughs> fair warning your kitchen depending on the kid will be like explosion <laughs> But, oh but the kids have so much fun and that girl went on to actually then like till now creating recipes of her family, like traditional recipes of of her country and like 
started really to enjoy cooking and continued doing that because, again, she had this experimental phase of creating her own recipes, uh, yeah. combining that with her traditional family recipes. So that, that's just an, an idea of you can combine language arts in doing the cookbook. They're, I mean, they're writing. They're, you know, you have the descriptive um, uh, language or other whatever grammar you're working on. And then you still have this very tactile experience with food. Yeah, well, I love it too because it also empowers them. Like it gives them the ability to be like, yeah, like this is what I'm choosing to do. I, I want to make this recipe and I'm interested in it. And then it gives them more buy-in too. What are some other ways that you empower your daughter to make different food choices? Well, when, we, when we're on the topic of empowerment, I would, if we cooked anything, like at the very beginning when she was really reluctant, I came up and I said, you know, the sauce makes the salad. And what I meant by that was I would put like every single herb, spice, oil. Um, back then we even had ketchup, um, <laughs> mayo, whatever. We put it on the table. And I would even say, you know what, you can get whatever you want out of, you know, our cupboards, the fridge, make it interesting. Like, like in the state of curiosity, and I role modeled that at the very beginning, she was really skeptical at, at first being like, nah, this is like, I don't want any of this, right? Because I don't want to experiment. And I, of course, had to go first, right? You have to go first. So I was like, hmm, how will this taste? And and ooh, how will this taste? And sometimes, yes, it is. It tasted disgusting, which I then said <laughs> because yeah. we're all open for making mistakes, right? I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, that was not a good idea. Yeah. And sort of uh, modeling, that's great. And and she like it. It took it, it might always. So what I noticed, it always takes around two weeks. Always mm -hmm. when I introduce something new. You always, I always, at least for my kid, most of the times hit some kind of little resistance and wall where she's just at the first kind of being like, hmm, I'm looking. But if you stay in character, you know, if you're like, hmm, okay, let's try this. And, and you really try and figure out the, the sauce that makes this even more delicious. Um, then they start getting into it and doing it themselves. Even if, fair warning, might be ketchup <laughs> like <laughs> and you're like does that really taste good yeah and they're like mm, this is really good and you're like mm -hmm. and you're like tasting it and you're like oh <laughs> but they're eating it and they're like making choices about food and they're like expanding what they're doing I, I really love that like just okay here's all the things you can do to make the food taste different the sauces the seasonings herbs yeah, go get experiment the let's try let's see what tastes the best i love it and then and then the best part about that is that you're you're willing to make mistakes too and and showing them like okay yeah i'm gonna try it too like i might not like this but i am willing to do this because i know it's important and that that's like the crux of it all is like i know yeah this and so i'm gonna participate and another point that we started pointing out like in the last half a year, which came coincidentally, like I never aimed at it, but we noticed that we have different taste buds, right? It's like sometimes you would just like, I would say, yeah, I know. I mean, it's fine. You like things I don't and I like things you don't, right? And so she started taking herbs out of um, our, our cupboards, which I'm actually not a big fan of and she liked. And then she started like, and she would be like, yeah, I mean, it's fine. You like it. I don't like it. I mean, fully, you know, it's it's like this this confidence of it being different. And yeah. that's okay because, you know, you like that. I like that. And it's just the way it is. Uh, so that's just a subtle thing that came in as well. Mm -hmm. um, and her taste, like, I don't know. How are, how are your kids, kids? Mine develops, like, continuously, like, from a year ago. A year ago, she would not, not, not eat hot spices, just yeah. not, or <laughs> onions, like nothing of that, right? And 
And now, and then all of a sudden, she's like, oh, I, or pepper. Pepper was always like a thing as well. Then all of a sudden I had white pepper. You know, that's not that spicy as the black pepper. Mm. And then she like put that all over the place because she could, you know, try around with it. And then she went over to black pepper and now she uses more black pepper than I do. So, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. very curious. Yeah. I think the common theme with all, all of these is just the communication part and, and how you're approaching it instead of just being, um, you know, like an author authority figure and just incur involving them in the communication and, and having fun with it. I love, I really love all, all of those strategies. And I feel like that's a lot of what I do naturally. And so it's been fun to have hear your experience too. That that lines up, but you're so much better at communicating it. So <laughs> it's been sometimes it's, been it's just the, yeah, right. We we naturally do it, and honestly, like I just started thinking about it when we talked last time as well. Of what did I actually do to make that transition for my child? And it's it's exactly like you said. It's this lightheartedness around it, being like, okay, you then don't and. And it's, so the cousins by us, like we celebrate salad, like everywhere I can, I celebrate salad being like, oh my God, I love salad. And if I give praise, like if I would give praise, you know how some people take chocolate as, you know, do this and then you get chocolate. I never yeah. do that um, because what you automatically do is put chocolate on the pedestal, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's an aim that you have to go for is sweets. And so that's a thing I really try not to do, but instead I do the same with vegetables. So, um, so if right now she's doing a course, uh, like an extra extracurricular course, like add on bonus. Yeah. And every time she would do a part of that, she would get, um, paprika points, we call it. So it's like, uh -huh. uh, it's that pe pepperoni, the, the oh. bell peppers. Oh, pepper. The bell yeah. peppers. Because she yeah. loves bell peppers over everything. Like, she can eat them any time at the fridge. <laughs> it's oh. like, it's, it's there. But yeah. we make it, like, fun being Special, like, oh, yeah. you've got another bell pepper. Um, instead of chocolate versus by the chocolate, which is, I'm not even acting that, but I tended to eat too much. Mm. And then I would get, you know, stomach ache. Like I would get sick of eating too much chocolate because I just, I can't take the sweets anymore that, that good. And then I would verbalize that. I would mm. literally like in front of her face or if I eat too much, um, cause if something is really good and sometimes I can't, I just couldn't stop and just yeah. would eat more. But mm. then I would get, you know, my, my stomach would get upset and I would verbalize that to my kid being like, Oh, oh no, I'm, you know, um, I'm mir schlecht. Um, I feel bad. Like, uh -huh. I would verbalize that, like, for a moment, like 30 seconds, to the point where she's already like, oh no, mom, don't say, don't say it. You ate too much again, didn't you? <laughs> and it's, it's like she became proud because she can stop. Like, she can take a piece of chocolate and then just stop in the middle of it and be like, nah, don't want it. Um, she can, like with all the sweets she's like that um and and um the same as like if she doesn't want any more like on the plate our things always try but but if, if you know if you're full then you're full you don't have to eat the rest and then and so she's really proud of being able to stop because mom can't <laughs> <laughs> so there's that competitiveness again yeah I get, yeah, exactly. So, and I praise her for that again, because I find it awesome that she can stop like that sweets is not this special thing. Yeah. Cause I grew up that chocolate was this, you just get it once in a while and then it's something yeah. special, mm. you know? And <clears throat> so that's kind of, I didn't want that conditioning. So it's, it's, yeah, we have this fun narrative around food. Like we, I think turned around um, then than most. I tried taking the pressure out and that pretty much yeah. was it. That's awesome. I, I love all of that. Those strategies. I, 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 I can't even imagine implementing the, the salad as a reward for my kids. 
<laughs> but I can see I can see maybe some other foods instead of chocolate, like because there's like a fruit dish that we we mix mangoes and blueberries and bananas in there, and it tastes like it tastes like dessert, and it's so good. I can see like different things for them getting excited about like that. That's so neat that you do that. Um, how can people get in touch with you if they want to connect and, and learn more about what you do in the language arts world? Yeah, so if you want to go to the language arts, then either go on um, story-weavers.com um, directly to our homepage or our Facebook group, Tui and Gifted home, uh, Language Arts Homeschoolers. Uh, that's where you can connect with me. Or, of course, you see my Facebook. Just DM me with any questions you have. We're yeah. rolling out... And uh, like an email and a uh, TikTok and YouTube uh, channel where we talk about strategies for teaching language arts to kids um, and public speaking and all of that. So you can, you know, DM me for the links or whatever and happy to talk with you. Yeah, I'll have to DM you too because I'd love to be on this and hear all your tricks for language arts. Yeah, um, same back. I love seeing you post. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Oh, this has been awesome. This week I'm going to be doing, well, this month I'm going to be doing more experts on picky eating, including uh, some more awesome homeschooling parents who just have experienced it or they're experts. And so if you're interested in finding out more, make sure you follow me on Facebook or just send me a message and I'll get you connected. Well, Geraldine, thank you so much. It's been awesome talking to you. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> Woo!